Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Lynn and today I am going to try something that I've thought about doing. I don't think I've ever quite done it this way before. Uh, so it actually turned out pretty okay. If it didn't, you wouldn't be seeing this video. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my own pattern paper, but I'm going to do two versions at the same time and they're going to be the inverted versions of each other. So I've got the um, Simply Sentimental Mary stamp. It has the word Mary in a lot, lot of different fonts. And then it has um, quite a few little sub sentiments that you can combine with it. So what I'm gonna do is I will stamp it once onto black and then the plan is to white heat emboss. So I'll have white lettering on black background and leaving the stamp in my stamp positioning tool, I will ink it up with black ink and stamp onto white cardstock. So it's going to be the reverse. And technically, I think if you wanted, you could probably, um, just ink with the Versafine Onyx black ink even onto black because it is a it is a pigment ink so it will be um it'll give you a little bit of time so that you can pour that white heat embossing powder over it it's just that I don't know if the white is really going to be quite as bright white if you stamp with black that's that was my concern I mean it shouldn't, it's it's fairly opaque, but you just never know. So that's why I actually cleaned in between um, stamping black. I did a, a quick clean, just a quick wipe with the water sometimes of the stamps. And then I inked with my clear Versamark ink. Um, partly so that, um, you know, I, I can actually see the inking a little bit better when I ink onto black because it's it's hard to see on camera but in real life it, it looks wet and that's what a clear sticky sticky ink will do for you um but partly also so that I don't um dirty up my first mark ink pad too much and lastly so that I I don't have any of that pigment ink that might you know tint my white heat embossed um, sentiment. I wanna to try to keep it as white as possible because normally a lot of times I'll even stamp with a white pigment ink just to heighten the white a little bit more. Um, so I'm gonna keep going back and forth like this, um, heat embossing or stamping with clear ink onto black and white heat embossing and then stamping with black onto white. With the um, clear heat embossing, I usually can stamp maybe two times and before I actually melt that embossing powder. Because once you have the powder on, there's not a lot of, you don't have to really rush to heat set it, except that, you know, you could accidentally brush off some of that powder. So as long as you're careful, it's, it's fine. You can take your time and stamp out the rest of the panel. It's just that, I needed room on the panel to um, be able to place my magnets to hold down the uh, the panel as I stamped. And so it did help to heat emboss a little bit as I went, but, um, but it is a lot of back and forth. And the reason why I'm making my own pattern paper is because I'm making Kendra's Card Challenge number 15, sketch number four. Sketch number four actually has two different pattern papers, paper B and paper C, but they kind of are butt up and meet in the center. So what I thought would be kind of neat is to have um, these two patterns be seamless so that I can cut it down the middle, but it's going to match up perfectly going from the white on black to the black on white version. So I thought that would be something a little bit fun to do. Uh, I cut out a little bit of the process because I think you get the idea of how to do it. It takes a little bit of time, but I think the effect 
at the end of the day is um is kind of nice. Now my card uh, my video today is part of a um not only is it a Trinity Stamps super sponsor hop where we are highlighting Trinity Stamps as a super sponsor, but it's actually a collaboration hop with the Trinity Stamps team. So bonus, you're gonna see lots of extra um inspiration. Just expand the description box below and what you'll find is a playlist where you'll see all of the videos and the videos are not only going to be from the designers on the Kendra's Card Challenge team but as well you're gonna get to meet some of the designers on the Trinity Stamps team and see even more inspiration. So big thank you to Trinity Stamps for being a super sponsor of Kendra's Card Challenge 15. Um, as a super sponsor they've donated prizes that you can win if you play along with the challenge and as well they've provided some of the designers on the team with products that we get to craft with and share with you so that you have an idea for the different things that you might be able to shop for if you want to shop trinity stamps and if you happen to be the lucky winner of the gift certificate that they've donated so check out the playlist and you'll be able to um find out all of the um or i should say just watch all of the videos that are participating in this collaboration. And if you want to find out all about Kendra's Car Challenge, the link to where you can download the free printable because it is free to play along. All you have to do is sign up for a free Patreon account and then um, in the pinned post, you'll be able to download the printable. Now, the printable will show you how to cut down six sheets of six by six pattern paper and then turn all of those pieces into 15 unique cards. You'll get the actual card sketch layouts for all 15 cards. So it's a really great resource. You're going to get a lot of card sketch ideas from this. And if you want to play along, you can actually play along once a month. And if you haven't yet played along for the month of July, you still have a few days left to do that because you just need to get one set of 15 cards completed, take a single photo that shows all of them, and then upload that to the official entry album on Facebook, Kendra's Card Challenge Community Group. Just search for that and you'll it'll come up because there are over 3,000 members in this group. So you're going to get to see a lot of fun inspiration. And I really love how this turned out. I mean, to be honest, that right there is a really... That right there could be the card. Maybe add a little sub-sentiment to it. Um, and in fact, I might do it again and, and have that be the card because I just love love the look of it. But as I was saying, to play along, you just need to take a single photo of all 15 cards and then upload that to the official entry album over on Facebook. Now you can actually enter once a month. So for the month of July, the month of August, and the month of September, you can enter one per month for a total of three times. Now, after the end of the month, usually about a week, 10 days or so after the, the month ends, Kendra will post a video to her channel where she showcases the entries from the previous month. And as well, she picks some winners for prizes. And what's great about this um, challenge is that it runs for three months. So you have a lot of time to make your 15 cards. If you if you only have time to enter once, perfectly okay. You got a lot of time to do it. Some folks enter the full three times, which is fabulous. Um, but you don't have to wait until the very end to see if you've won something. Every month, Kendra draws winners. And so there's lots of fabulous prizes donated to us by our prize sponsors and our super sponsors. And as well, Kendra donates some prizes too. So lots of opportunities to win. All you need to do is make a full set of cards, upload it to the official entry album, and then be sure to watch Kendra's um, winner announcement video to see if you've won something. Now this hop itself, there is a digital um, prize that you can win. And so just expand the description box below. You'll see the link to where you can enter to win a digital prize from Kendra. And I think it's just a lot of fun to um, 
uh, get to introduce you to some of the designers on the Trinity Stamps team. So I do hope that you'll expand the description box and check out the playlist because the playlist is a really great way for you to see all of the videos that are part of this collaboration. But because there are a lot of videos and it might be hard to watch them all in one sitting, the playlist is great because it collects them all in one spot. And also, you know, you can pick up watching right where you left off because it's easy to tell which videos you've watched and which you haven't yet. Now this mug is ginormous. This is the Berry Cute Layered Mug Die Set. It does have several, several different add-ons and it's so big. I even had the whipped cream, the dollop of whipped cream cut out, but at the end of the day, I decided not to use it because it was, it would have covered up my entire pattern paper, which I took, you know, care to create myself. So I think by just having the mug, it still gives you the idea that um, that sort of black and white combo uh, and um, there's still enough of it showing that you can kind of see that it seamlessly continues. But that's one of the reasons why as you're making the background, don't be overly precious about it. If it doesn't stamp perfectly, if it doesn't heat emboss perfectly, totally okay because you're gonna put something on top of it and it's going to fade into the background. But I love the look of it. I might do that again, um, but very carefully so that it's actually the statement piece because as I was putting this together, it, it just looked so striking and I really love how that turned out. Thanks so much for checking out my video today and until next time, happy crafting and have a fabulous day. Bye.